Hey guys, today's from the install bay. We're going to talk about mounting your fuse holder. Why not? Stay tuned. So when installing an amplifier in a car, one of the key essentials to doing that is the fuse holder. The fuse holder is what protects the wire when it runs through the firewall uh, so that no damage comes to the car if anything happens to the, the wire while it's going through the vehicle. So it's an essential safety feature that they provide you with when you buy like an amp install kit or anytime you install an amp. There's always a fuse that needs to go between the battery and the firewall into the car. But for some reason, people don't like to mount these things. They just like let them chill, you know, maybe they'll put a zip tie on them, um, if you're lucky. But it's kind of weird because there again, this is a safety feature uh, and they're, they go bad. Um, we've seen where sometimes the fuses will get loose inside here just because they get hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. Metal will expand and contract and then the fuse will become loose. When it becomes loose, it starts to arc and when it arcs, it creates heat and then heat will melt the fuse holder. So we've had plenty of situations where the fuse holders have melted. Um, and if they're sitting next to something, let's say like a uh, brake booster or oil or air conditioning or electrical, they could catch those or melt those as well, catch them on fire or melt them as well. So mounting the fuse holder seems like it would be a no-brainer. You're going to want to do it, right? You would think. So today what we're going to do is show you the steps we take in order to mount the fuse holder. So looking at the battery here, this is, this is where we're going to connect. There's a couple different places. Now, some people will just put double-sided tape on here and attach it to here. That's cool. At least it's mounted. Double-sided tape, if you got really good double-sided tape, will hold. The only problem is, is that if you ever need to service this, this pops up. You're going to have to disconnect it in order to do it. There again, it's not the end of the world, and at least it's mounted. There's a nice ledge right here. You could easily just drill a hole through this ledge, mount this fuse holder just like this. Uh, that will keep it safe. You could possibly just put it like this. There's a lot of options that you can do without actually needing the uh, ABS that we like to use. We, of course, like to display the fuse uh, so it's easy to see if we ever have to service the car. So we're thinking about mounting it something like this up high so that this may still open um, or possibly over here. We're gonna check it out a little bit. We could also build a mount that puts it over here where it comes off of this bolt and sits between out like this. Uh, if we're gonna do something like that where we need to go an extended distance, we'll use a thicker ABS. In this case, we'd use a quarter inch because quarter inch is actually thicker than the ABS that this is made out of. And we don't want it to heat or sag eventually. Uh, if we're just gonna do a bend like this, we could use the eighth inch. Um, hmm. Actually, this is not a bad idea. To bring the wire in and around and attach here, it will bring the wire across the top of the battery. Let's see what we got. I liked this, but when this goes to open, plus you need to access that, that's gonna get in the way. Uh, somewhere over here probably will hit this. So at the end of the day, putting it out here like this is probably going to be our best option. So now what we wanna do is take some measurements and build it. So this is the ABS that we use. We have a quarter inch thick here. And what makes ABS? ABS is bumpy on one side, smooth on the other. It's real rigid. Uh, this is the eighth inch there again. You can usually pick this stuff up in a 12 by 12 sheet. I know Amazon sells it. Um, some, uh, like I know Amp of America sells the eighth inch in a 12 by 12 sheet, so does Metra. So a lot of stereo shops have this stuff. Or you could just contact your local plastic supply house, although you'll probably have to buy a four foot by eight foot sheet like we do. But, so for this we're gonna use the quarter inch. We need a three inch by four inch piece. Now because this stuff is black, uh, you wanna use like a white grease pencil to write on it. Um, if you have to do any drawing like we're gonna have to do here. It just shows up really nice. Now we're gonna use this bolt to attach this. So what we wanna do is just put it where we think it needs to go and press really hard. And that'll put an indention on the bottom so we can know where to drill the hole.
All right, so that looks like a good fit. This will sit like this. Let's just pretty this thing up real quick. So we went ahead and used a little round over bit to bevel the edge here so it looks a little bit uh, cleaner. That'll sit like this. The fuse holder is gonna mount like that. So now all we need to do is attach the fuse holder. So when you go to mount your fuse holder to your ABS, you wanna drill pilot holes for where the screw is gonna go. ABS really doesn't do well if you just try to drive a screw through it. it tends to just heat up and not tighten. So the screws we have, they go all the way through and they leave little pointy things on the bottom. We don't want anyone getting hurt if they're reaching in the engine compartment. So we go ahead and sand those off. All right, so we have our fuse mount. Now all we need to do is add a piece of wire to it to go to the battery. Anytime you're putting a fuse holder in that has one of these fuses that screws in, make sure you just check it to make sure that the fuse is in there as tight as it possibly can. Um, whether it's a nut or a screwdriver or whatever, just make sure you check it to make sure it's tight. A lot of the times these things will come loose, uh, and if that's the case, this is going to short out, heat up, and melt the fuse holder. All right, so let's take it over the car and measure how long this needs to be. And I think I like going this way better. Um, what we'll probably do is drill a few holes and zip tie the wire into place. So it sits like this and then put a ring terminal right there. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So now that we have the wire to the length we want, we need to cover this wire in something before we you know, zip tie this thing in place. Now there's two different things that we use to cover a wire. We have this stuff here, which is just standard loom. And of course we have this stuff here, which is Timflex, also known as the Chinese finger torture. Either one of these will do the job. Most kits come with this, and this is perfectly adequate for the job. Uh, for this one, we are going to be using loom. Loom just has a slit in it, and you just slide it right on. And you cut it to length. Now we also put a small piece of heat shrink on the end, so the color of what it is, so that way it's easy to tell that it is a positive connection. So now we're gonna go ahead and drill some holes because we wanna mount it like this. Now we have extra bolts that we buy just to do this, so it's a double bolt, so if they take this bolt off, the battery's still secured in place. Uh, it is just a standard 10 millimeter bolt. You don't have to do that, of course, you can just use the bolt that's under there. Since we're looking at the battery terminal real quick, let's talk about a few things. This bolt and this bolt are awfully alluring as far as you, oh man, this would be great. Just hook it up right here or right here. But these two guys here are fuses for the car. This one's a 250 amp, this one's a 100 amp. The sucky thing is, is that if you blow either one of these, you have to replace this whole module. So you definitely, even though these look appealing, don't want to use either one of these. This one is okay, and this one is okay. Now, naturally you wanna make sure you can put this guy back on. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut right here so that this will snap back over in place and allow room for the new wiring. So the only thing we have left to do is attach our power wire coming from the car to this fuse holder. There's another thing, you always wanna keep an eye on where this is going and try to tuck it in with a factory wiring harness. You don't just wanna let it go willy-nilly draped across in the engine compartment because there again, you, you don't want this fuse to blow. You don't wanna give this fuse a reason to blow. So we're gonna go ahead and cover this up, figure out where we want it to run and zip tie it in place.
man. Where have you been? Oh, you, yeah. missed, you missed all the fun. Really? Yeah. Well, you know, I just magically snake charmed that four gauge wire yeah, to the firewall, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. I can do that. Okay. Yeah. yeah, Jedi mind trick. All right. So we hope this helps you guys. Uh, you know, as always, we hope it helps. You know, do better installs. Uh, maybe think about doing things differently than the way you've done them in the past. Whatever, you know, they're fun to watch, right? Yeah, definitely. Well, at least that's what you guys tell me, and we're, we appreciate all that. <laughs> Anyways, Fernando. Please. All right, so thank you for watching. You know where to find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Do they know? Oh, of course they know. Well, that's wonderful. All right, you guys. If you like to ask questions, then check out our Facebook Live every Monday night. Yep, Eastern uh, Standard. 6.30. Yes, sir. Yeah. If you want a cool five-star t-shirt, we have them available now up on Teespring. Uh, just do a search for five-star car stereo or type in five-star T. Uh, yeah, hopefully it'll still be available when this video goes up. Uh, if not, just, you know, ask in the comments and we'll put it back up there for you. There you go. Uh, it's getting long. You guys have a great night and we will see you later next time. Bye.